Today, we will learn and reflect on the Cynic philosophers who were the flower children of ancient Greece. The Cynic philosophers both taught and lived in the Stoa or city square of Athens, owning only their sandals and the clothes on their back. The most famous of the Cynics was Diogenes of Sinope, who lived in a pot in the city square of Athens. When Alexander the Great visited Athens, he told Diogenes he would grant him whatever he desired. Diogenes simply asked that if Alexander the Great could step to one side as he was blocking the sun. Now you may ask, how will studying the cynic philosophers improve my soul? Well, we can learn how to live simple moral lives like the cynics. The cynics lived simple lives with few possessions, like the later holy monastics who lived in the deserts of Egypt, and I might add the monks of uh, St. Benedict. Living a simple moral life was their only true possession. And this is a, an idea which influenced uh, Stoic philosophy and later influenced Christian thinking. At the end of our talk, we will discuss the main source for our video, The Lives of Eminent Philosophers by Diogenes of Laertius, and we will speculate on why the works of the Greek Stoic philosophers have been lost to the sands of history. Please share this video with your friends. The Greek moral philosophers were not merely academics. They were philosophical evangelists, preaching the inner joys of living a godly life. We welcome interesting questions in the comments below. Sometimes these generate thought videos of their own. Let us learn and reflect together. For the Greek Cynic philosophers and the later Roman Stoics, ethics, and moral philosophy were all that mattered. They were not interested in physics or epistemology and the nature of things. Like the early monastics, like St. Francis, they lived frugally, eating only for nourishment, wearing only a clerk. Now they did hold classes outdoors. Our sources list many works. So of course, uh, unfortunately, most of, most of them have been lost. Now Antisthenes was the first cynic philosopher, although he didn't call himself a cynic. And Antisthenes walked five miles a day to study under Socrates. Now Antisthenes uh, was not eager to accept new students and sometimes even tried to chase away prospective students with his staff because he wanted to test whether or not they were committed to living the cynic life. Now we must presume that if given a choice uh, you would choose hearing from the cynic philosophers themselves or from quotes by Diogenes of Laertius of their sayings rather than my ramblings about the cynics. So we will go heavy on their actual sayings and go a little bit light on the assorted brucisms. Uh, Antisthenes said, I would rather go mad than feel pleasure. He counseled humility. You should learn from the knowledgeable that the faults you possess can be avoided. Now for this saying, this next saying, we want to keep in mind that in Greek, it's a play of words. In Greek, karokas is crows and kolokas is flatterers. It would be better to fall in with crows than flatterers, for, for you were devoured by crows when you were dead, but you were devoured by flatterers when you were alive. Also, pay attention to your enemies, for they are, they are the first to notice your faults. In other words, we can learn from our enemies and their criticisms. When reproached one day for associating with worthless men, uh, Antigone said, doctors associate with patients without falling into a fever themselves which is similar to the saying of Jesus. It is not the healthy who need a sick, who need a doctor, but the sick. Now, when asked, uh, when Antisthenes, when asked what advantage he enjoyed from philosophy, he said to be able to live in company with oneself. When asked what is man's greatest blessing, he replied, to die happy. Antisthenes sought to prove that virtue could be taught and that to be virtuous is to be noble. Uh, virtue is all that is needed for happiness, according to Antisthenes, since it needs nothing but the strength of Socrates. Virtue is a matter of deeds and needs no abundance of words or learning. The wise man needs only the law of virtue to govern his behavior. He does not need written laws. Virtue is a weapon that cannot be taken away, which reminds us of the teaching by St. Augustine that if you truly love God, you can uh, not worry so much about the law, but do as you will, because your inner instincts will be proper. Uh, Diogenes of Sinope was another uh, famous cynic philosopher. Uh, he lived in a pot in the store or the city square. Once Diogenes saw a little boy cup his hand to take a drink, but uh, when he saw that, he realized he didn't need, need a cup, so he threw away his cup 
when Diogenes studied under uh, Antisthenes, Antisthenes tried to drive him away, beating him with a staff. Uh, in response, Diogenes shouted, Strike! You will not find wood hard enough to keep me away as long as you have something worthwhile to say. Diogenes was also difficult to his students. Uh, one time, someone asked to be a student, and so Diogenes gave him a fish, told him to follow along, but the prospective student was rather insulted. So he threw away the fish and, and walked away. And seeing that, Diogenes simply noted, a fish has destroyed our friendship. Diogenes once observed that people uh, commonly exert themselves to outdo each other at the gym, but rarely will they take any effort to develop their own character. The, the, the sources also uh, record that uh, Diogenes of Sinope liked to bait Plato. Uh, once uh, Plato defined a man as an animal with two legs and no feathers. So Diogenes plucked a cock and brought it to Plato's school saying, This is Plato's man. Another time when invited to Plato's house, he was trampling on Plato's carpets, and he said, I trample on Plato's pomposity. To which Plato replied, How much vanity you expose Diogenes by not appearing to be vain. Now Plato gave Diogenes his nickname, the dog. Now Diogenes said that although he was a dog of the kind that men admire, none dared to take him along on a hunt. Once, when Alexander the Great came to him, he said, I am Alexander the Great King. Uh, to which he replied, And I am Diogenes, the dog. When asked what he had done to be nicknamed the dog, he said, Well, I fawn on those who give me something, bark at those who don't, and bite the wicked. Now, Diogenes of Sinope lived first in Athens, then in Corinth. When Diogenes was traveling once, uh, he was captured by pirates who sold him as a slave in, uh, in Corinth. When the slave auctioneer in Corinth asked him what was his talent, Diogenes replied, I am good at ruling men, and so whoever purchases me as a slave is really purchasing their master. Now he was bought by Zeniades to help him raise his teenage sons, uh, teaching them how to ride and hunt. But Diogenes sought to teach them a much more important lesson, that is, how to live your life with the moral values of a cynic philosopher. Diogenes taught the sons of Zeniades how to live on plain food and water, wear their hair short and unadorned to go barefoot without a tunic, and to be silent and keep their eyes lowered when walking in the streets. Zeniades was so grateful for his services that he told his neighbors, a kindly deity has entered my house. When his friends offered to ransom him from his servitude to Zeniades, Diogenes refused, saying that lions are not the slaves of those who feed them. It is the feeders, rather, who are the lion slaves, for fear is the mark of a slave, and wild beasts make men fearful. And in this way, Diogenes was like Epictetus, the later uh, Roman Stoic philosopher, who himself was a former slave of a former slave, who also lived frugally. Epictetus taught us that the tyrants can take away our possessions and also enslave us, but they, they can never steal our soul. Possessions can own you, but living a moral life will make you truly free and truly happy. Diogenes of Sinope uh, lived a happy life and was buried next to the sons of Zeniades whom, because he was treated as part of the family. Uh, later Cynic philosophers uh, were Crates and Hipparchia and they are truly unique because they are probably the only married philosophical couple in ancient Greece and Rome. Zeno, the first Greek Stoic philosopher, studied under Crates. Some of the sayings of Crates Crates said that his native land was obscurity and poverty. Crates also said that uh, we should study philosophy to the point where we discern that our generals are mere donkey drivers. His sayings include, those who surround themselves with flatterers are as friendless and, and as calves among wolves, for neither the former nor the latter have anyone to protect them, but only the sort who plot against them. It is impossible to find anyone who has no flaw. Just as in a pomegranate fruit, there is always a rotten seed in everyone. This is the story of how Crates married Hipparchia. Hipparchia fell in love with Crates and his discourses in his life. She paid no attention to any of her other suitors, nor to their wealth, nor to their noble birth, nor to their beauty. Instead, Crates and his teachings were everything to her. 
And what is more, she even threatened her parents that she would commit suicide unless she were given to Crates in marriage. Crates, therefore, when entreated by her parents to dissuade their daughter from marrying him, did all he could to dissuade her, but when he failed, he stood up, took off his clothes in front of her and said, This is your bridegroom, and this is all of his property. Think it over, for you will be no companion to me unless you adopt my way of life. Hipparchy accepted, and after adopting the same dress, went about with her husband and consorted with him in public and attended dinners with him. This reminds us of advice given by St. John of the Cross in Dark Night of the Soul, uh, written many centuries later. St. John of the Cross advised in his uh, Dark Night of the Soul that we should only choose those good friends who will increase in us uh, our love of God. Regarding Crates and Hipparchia, scholars have many unanswered questions. Did they live in separate pots in the Stoa? Or did they share a pot? To show he had nothing to hide, the sources say that Diogenes of Sinope masturbated in public. And which brings us to uh, ask, uh, did uh, Crates and Hipparchia also consort in public? Or maybe they did this after dark. And the most important question, did Hipparchia ever relent as newly, newly wed wives often relent? And insist that Crates quit being a philosopher and go get a real job? Now, scholars are pretty certain that this last point did not happen, as they say that Crates lived a happy philosophical life to a ripe old age, but perhaps further scholarship will provide answers to this and other questions. Most of what we know about the Greek cynic and Stoic philosophers comes from the lives of eminent philosophers by Diogenes of Laertius. Their original writings are lost. In addition to the lives, we have only fragments and snippets quoted by other Greek authors. Now keep in mind the Diogenes of Laertius, the historian, is a very different Diogenes than Diogenes of Sinope, who was our uh, Cynic philosopher. Now some of the weaknesses of the lives is that he likes to describe the philosophers with uh, pithy anecdotes of their lives and is a little short sometimes on their actual sayings and teachings, but that works quite well for the Greek cynic philosophers who are so idiosyncratic. Also in the appendix of the edition uh, of the lives that we consulted are many excellent essays by leading scholars of the ancient Greek world, and these essays are just about as long and just about as interesting as the um, writings of Diogenes himself in the first part of the book, so we would encourage you to buy this particular edition, you know, for these essays themselves. Please click on the link for our blog for the Greek Cynic Philosophers, and also on the links for our YouTube videos on Zeno, the Greek Stoic Philosopher, and Epictetus, the Roman Stoic Philosopher, and other interesting videos that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.